Call routing is about ensuring that customers get through to the right person to answer their call as quickly as possible. And if they can't get through to that person, then it's a case of uh, holding them on the line and giving them enough comfort message, music on hold and uh, comfort that we will be answering their call and their call is important to us. And we have uh, a number of options uh, providing that functionality, starting with a very basic functionality, which is Unified Call Distribution or UCD for short. And what UCD offers is the ability for a number of uh, members of staff to log into a hunt group and that hunt group will hunt through uh, evenly in turn uh, a set of people. So a call will come in, it'll pass it to user A, next call comes through, user B, next call comes through, user C. Each person, each user is uh, has the ability to log into that group. So if they're not logged in, they won't get calls. And there is the ability for a supervisor to log people in as well. So UCD provides a very, very basic functionality of managing calls coming into a small group of people. And for the music and hold source, we have a number of classical tracks available with thank you for calling, your call is important, recorded into them so that you can give the functionality of uh, appearance of an ACD without necessarily deploying um, the technology required to do it. So UCD is a starting point, but if you really need to get the, the functionality of ACD, then there is no substitute for it. And what ACD can do is start doing a number of, of clever things around it. So, for example, we can do simple que call queuing. We can do three levels of announce. So when you come into the queue, first of all, you get the first announce. If you've been in the queue for a period of time, you get the second announce and we can do a third announce. Perhaps, you know, we're extremely busy today, that type of message, uh, if they've been waiting in there for an extremely long time. We can prompt callers to route their own calls, so we can actually ask them for something, and that allows us to route on it. We can do intelligent call announcements if we wish. You are currently third in the queue, or that could be the average wait time from where you are is, you know, two minutes. So we can give that sort of type of intelligent announcement. We can use interactive voice assist, and we can ask for the customer to put in their platinum number. And if we validate that platinum number, we could advance the call up in the, uh, in the rankings, move it to VIP, for example. We can run schedules on the call queues. And what this will allow us to do is, for example, uh, after five o'clock, we could route to a homework or we could route to our American office. We can choose where we route the calls based on every second of the day. This allows us to provide lunchtime cover or follow the sun type coverage and so on. As far as patterns of, of routing the calls are concerned, we can do round robin. So the calls are placed to agents in turn. We can do longest idle. The person who hasn't been on the phone for the longest period of time gets the next call. Or let's say John was into the office uh, 30 minutes late this morning. Therefore, he's a bit behind with the average amount of calls that everyone else has had. We can make sure that John gets a number of calls to catch him up. So it becomes quite fair and everyone gets the same volume of calls. We can look at agent priority. Um, so we can route to certain agents that have a, a highest ranking uh, compared to others. This is a bit like skills-based routing. For each queue, we can say this agent is the most knowledgeable, this agent is the least knowledgeable. Or we can reverse the order by deliberately for forcing that the other way. And we could put a trainee at the front of that by making them effectively the most knowledgeable so they get every call. And that will help build, the, build their knowledge up during a, a, a training type um, situation. We can do queue priority. So we could say have two or three calls, agents in, in, in the same um, agents in, in each of those queues. And one of them happens to be the VIP line. So that can have a higher ranking than the second queue. That way we get to our important customers first. Then we get to the, the rest of the customers. Customers. And if we work on the principle, 80% of our business comes from the top 20%, it's not a bad thing to, to streamline your customers and actually prioritize that, that top 20% who are spending the money. We can look at dynamic call management. So we can look at uh, agent to call busy ratio. In other words, and we've got more calls in the queue that we can answer with our standard agents. Let's do something with it. That could be raise an alarm. It could be to interflow a second queue into the first queue. Uh, anything that actually helps us manage and bring forward the ability to answer, providing the person answering is obviously able to, uh, to do something useful with that. We can do look ahead agent selection. So we can say uh, the longest waiting call uh, is upgraded to VIP when uh, a, a certain criteria is met. If I jump to the last one there with preferred agent, what we can do is we can actually put in a pin code and we can actually di uh, direct that call directly to an agent um, that was dealing with that case for, uh, for the customer, for example. And uh, the one I just jumped there, the real-time callbacks, is we can, um, and often this is done at the third announce port, uh, we can say at the third announce point of, uh, you know, we've been waiting five minutes. Uh, we're having really, really busy um, day today. Uh, if you'd like to press one, we will call you back and you can give your um, uh, customers that opportunity under, uh, under certain conditions. 
There's all sorts of things we can do here with uh, our intelligent announcements. Um, to start off with, obviously, I mentioned that we have the, the three levels of, of standard announce. Um, but the VA ports can be quite useful and they're also used for interactive voice responsing. Uh, and that's where we actually might interrogate a customer, get some information, look up some uh, uh, database information based on that and pass something back. So that's how you'd get, for example, the balance on your account is. We'd ask for the account information, validate it, date of birth, whatever it is, and then we can take uh, some data out of the database and read it back to the customer. So with intelligent announcements, we can do a, a lot of, uh, of, of useful functionality. We can scale to 96 ports, which means we can do 96 announcements simultaneously uh, to a customer queue. We, we can do that sort of functionality if uh, if we need to. Um, what we can also do is is ask customers information and then perhaps route the call in a, in a different way. So using interactive voice response along with intelligent announcements allows us to use information, get information to the customers. Maybe we can avoid an agent actually uh, needing to talk directly to the customer. And obviously from a customer's perspective, if we can get information without needing to wait, then that's obviously good for us as well. So intelligent announcements can be very, very useful in that way, as can intelligent call routing. And what we're able to do here is uh, we're able to look at, for example, the CLI of the, uh, the inbound call and look at that CLI as far as the database is concerned and route the calls based on that. So that could be, for example, looking at the CLI coming from Birmingham. It's a Midlands uh, account, and therefore we have a Midlands sales team that look after those accounts. Let's route that Midlands call to the Midlands sales team. It could be that we use um, call router to look at a database and identify that a user is on credit hold at the moment. So rather than put the call through to the sales desk, we'll pass the call through to the accounts team, get the call cleared on the, the accounts cleared, get the payment on onto the account, and then we'll allow the call go, to go back to the, uh, the sales team. So we can do up to 3 million records checked in you know a, a fraction of a second, which, which makes it a very, very powerful tool for looking at and looking ahead and deciding where to place that call. One of the key things you can use call router for is in intelligently identifying who the agent was who, who talked to that customer and trying to route the call through to that same agent next time they call in. That takes this big contact center concept, delivering it down to that personalized basis where last time I called in, I got John. This time I called in, I got John because call routing can identify that on call router and we can set a, uh, let's say a three minute wait time and we'll wait for John to come free. And if John comes free, we'll bounce this person directly into that because that's his preferred agent. So intelligent call routing can be very, very useful to increase the, um, the personability of the contact center and to actually manage the call through to the right person to ensure that the customer's dealt with as quickly as possible. Other examples of, uh, of call routing could be that rather than give multiple numbers out, we keep the same golden number that uh, customers call in on, but we identify our top 10 or 20% of customers by CLI and we route the calls based on that. So we prioritize the top 20 or top 10 in this example against the other 90. And if a call comes through for, them, for the top 10% of our, my accounts, it will actually be bounced to the front of the queue, allowing my higher spending customers to get the best service. The other thing we could do is the other example there is we have a group of agents that deal with overdue accounts. A call comes in, we identify that that account is on hold, it's overdue. So we can put the call through to the accounts department before hitting the sales team to save tying my sales team up with things they can't uh, get any uh, value out of because the account's on hold. Pay your account, then we'll, we'll deal with your sales inquiry and see what we can obviously ship to you. So there's loads of different ways that you can uh, use intelligent call routing and they were just a couple of examples. So the benefits of using intelligent call routing are we really, we, we, we provide an improved customer service because we deal with the calls as quickly as possible and provide the, the best person to deal with that. That gives obviously far better customer satisfaction. And if we're answering the calls quicker, it means that we can get the volume through quicker, which means we can give everybody a far better, uh, a better service. Plus the final point there about improving the accuracy and efficiency, because we're learning from the customer's experience and we're actually fast tracking them through that same process next time. Interactive voice response adds a, an additional layer over what we've, what we've already talked about because there may be things that we can do based on information the customer gives us. So this was perhaps the customer comes in and gives us an account number. Uh, we go and check a database, look at the value outstanding on that account and read that information back to the customer. Your account has a debit balance of, you know, £250. 
customer then knows how much they need to pay and they can obviously make a payment for that it could be they don't even need to talk to an agent to uh, to get that information out of the system so what we're doing here is providing a quick way for a, a customer to get what they want but we're not necessarily tying up staff who then have to manually type in the uh, account code and look it up and, and feed it back so anything uh, any input that we can do via voice or keypad we could use database assist and the IVR functionality to actively use a database to provide information back um, and then obviously once it's done that it can then make a decision on actually routing the call as well and in some cases we can do quite some sophisticated stuff in the background on here uh, one of my customers gone as far as creating a transactional back end where they're able to actually read that account information out tell them how much is owed and then take a credit card and then transact it in the background and then confirm that it's been transacted correctly. So there's loads of scripting and functionality that can be added behind this that can make the phone system as functional and as flexible uh, as your business needs. So the benefits of, of IVR, we've really, we've really covered. It's the ability to get data out of a database and, and feed it back to a customer without having a human being necessarily involved in it. Um, it can increase productivity because we can actually pass some of the information through then to the actual agent who may be taking a live call once we connect the call um, and save them needing to actually ask for what's your account number again. And we can prioritize the, the call based on information that we've actually received out of that database or we can place specific announcements based on the answers they've given to actually provide them with what they might need or give them a, a better comfort. And that's benefits of, uh, of IVR. We then have another set of features we can add or functionality we can add using web callback and chat. And this is effectively multimediaizing the ACD. We've done a phone system, a uh, phone call in, but there are other ways now that, that customers can interact. One of them being online chat. And you may have seen that on websites where uh, a window pops up and, and we can do that functionality. Or the other one is going to website and saying, uh, well, here's my telephone number. You call me. That can that can save the customer time and money as well. So let's look at web chat first of all. Um, live chat on, on, on websites, I was reading a report the other day, actually said that uh, satisfaction levels are the highest on chat because it's a, it's a quick, easy way for customers to actually get their information over and get an answer back. Uh, it allows customers to multitask. So uh, they can be doing other things. They're not just tied to that. Whereas on the phone, it's very hard to start multitasking even when you're, where you're in a queue because you can just walk away for a minute and, and the chat screen's still obviously, uh, still obviously there. The agent at the other end doesn't sort of hang up because you're not there for 10 seconds. Um, so users find it more efficient. They find their requests can be moved along quickly because emails tend to bounce backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. There's a lot of latency on email. In real time chat, you can ask a question, get an answer, ask the next question, get the next answer back quite quickly. And therefore customers feel in control of that conversation. So web chat can be very, very powerful. And, and say, as it says up the top there, 73% of customers who've used chat were satisfied with it compared to only 61 from email and 41 from, from the phone call. So it's certainly an offering that you should have. So to use web chat, you put a script on your website, which brings up a box saying, you know, would you like to chat? And the customer on the website can just type in some information, press submit, and that information then is automatically queued to the next available agent. Once an agent gets into a chat uh, functionality, they're no longer available to take phone calls and they can take several different um, uh, chat conversations because obviously it takes a while to move the chat through so they can actually respond to three four or five different messages at any any one time the system's clever enough to set up uh, an initial exit message so it will actually uh, welcome you by name when you come on on board and it will tell you the name of the agent that it's connected the call to so you get that welcome script and goodbye script it's not up to the agent then to put that information in and the other cool thing is that you can take reports off the system. You can look at how many calls agents uh, have responded to, how, you know, how many chat sessions they entered into and how long they were in chat. So if you're using our, our task reporting tool, you're able to actually report back on uh, their functionality of, of, of how many chats they did a day, as well as how many um, inbound uh, ACDQ calls they answered as well. Web callback um, is another function that you can offer, and this is allowing the customer to put the telephone number on and say you call me so here's an example on the right there where I, i'm encouraged to select the area that i want to make uh, my call about 
put my name and, and telephone number in there and then I click uh, queue the callback and that call is then placed in the queue. Now that can be real time into a queue or we could actually choose to call them back at a set time when maybe the amount of calls in the queue is is, is you know uh, down to maybe only one call or something. So if I'm really, really busy, I'm not obliged to call that person back immediately. The other thing with it is because we've got those tick boxes above, that allows us to decide which queue we put the call into. So the call can come into any one of the queues, sales, technical, whatever it happens to be, uh, or we could have a, um, a web callback only queue, for example. And one of the other clever things we can do with the web callback is we can actually write the abandoned call lists into a web callback file and actually call them back using web callback um, and maybe we have an abandoned queue call for example and we put those calls into the abandoned uh, queue so when the agent gets the call they know they're ringing back somebody who, who dropped out of the queue and they can uh, approach the customer in that way um, so web callback is a great facility for saving the customer call charges and, and reducing customer wait time so you're improving satisfaction with your customers there so just to summarize what does a contact center do? Well, it gives the customer a uh, choice. They've got a scalable way of interfacing with their customers uh, using either uh, UCD, ACD, adding intelligent routing and adding multimedia on the top of it as well. All of that will then improve the customer service and allow them to provide best in class depending on how far they want to go. And the final thing, obviously, is it maximizes the productivity of the agents because the agents don't have to worry about what to do next. They're managed that way by the supervisor and the software, and the supervisor can uh, look at the data, see what's happening, make changes, and adapt the system. And it's scalable anywhere from, from 10 agents to 360 on a single site or 720 over several systems. And so it becomes a, a very, very powerful solution for small to medium uh, enterprises. Thank you.